Welcome. This is an impromptu video. We're going to cover why the RTX 3000 series matters and why AMD might actually be in a little bit of trouble. So this is Control. This is a great example of RTX and the previous generation. You can see the various lighting effects and the various techniques that were used to render this scene with RTX versus RTX off. So starting off, I want to talk about what happens when your SDK is slightly newer than your competitors. NVIDIA has an advantage here because they have had an RTX API and SDK out since 2018. AMD is coming out with one. By all accounts, it's pretty good, but we don't know enough about it. So this means that AMD needs to not only play catch up to make sure that their SDK matches what the previous generation from NVIDIA has, but now they also need to make sure that anything that comes out with Ampere, they can match performance wise, as well as feature and spec wise. It has to be easy for developers to use, of course, otherwise they're not gonna use it. So this puts AMD at a disadvantage compared to NVIDIA. So here we have Cyberpunk 2077. Now I realize that this is a cheap plug. I'm super excited for this game. Uh, I think most people are super excited for this game. Effectively, what DLS and the technology is giving you is less jaggies, a very smooth scene with less pressure on your local GPU. It's using thousands of samples that are stored at NVIDIA and processed at NVIDIA in order to understand how best to render the scene, creating an algorithm, which is simply a numerical calculation, providing that calculation information to your local GPU so the local GPU knows how to render this scene better by inserting additional pixels here and there where it is actually necessary. Now this reduces the rendering effort and allows you to actually have higher resolution with fewer jaggies and better performance of a scene overall. Big technical advantage basically for them and, and kind of a really big deal, right? AMD is really going to have to step up their game and their version of this in order to compete. Because when you combine what they are doing with our, with ray tracing, path tracing, DLSS, and some of the other things that they announced, ultimately they have a huge answer for their marketing campaign. And the more games that are developing and using this technique, the more pressure is going to be placed upon AMD in order to compete. So one area that AMD has traditionally had an advantage is in rendering. Ever since Threadripper and Ryzen dropped, AMD has really had a great answer to reduce rendering time for content creators to create something, view it in almost real time, and get it created to get it out the door. Now we see AMD coming and focusing even harder in this space with NVIDIA Studio. They are now competing directly with AMD's CPU line to basically say, look, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you're already going to get the best rendering time, so why not use it? Another area I want to focus on here is the broadcast. So they announced essentially a compete for OBS and XSplit uh, that leverages NVIDIA's existing technology in order to give you theoretically better broadcasting. So previously, NVIDIA has had the ability to filter out noise in your background using an RTX card. They've announced that they are extending this capability to other cards as well, uh, the GTX 10 series, essentially, Pascal. NVIDIA also has their own encoder, which is considered by many to simply be the best potential encoder that you can use for a GPU because there's dedicated cores on the RTX cards to help you offload the rendering and the processing in order to, to live stream and to be able to record items as well. I just noticed this. This is hilarious. Mainstream celebrities from all walks of life are getting into the action too, from Terry Crews and Post Malone to Logic. Terry Crews, Post Malone, both of them partnered up with Jace Two Cents. Uh, to get a system built, and, and there was an entire series around that. 
to me, that is hilarious because I I know that story and I think it's awesome that those folks are doing it. But I also know that they got a system built by Jay's Two Cents, who is somebody that I like to watch. So that's that's hilarious. Go check out those videos uh, if you have the time. They have tripled down. They have tripled down on this broadcast suite idea. So not only is it microphones and now it's speakers, it's your camera as well. Being able to follow you, being able to move around as you move in the scene, being able to follow you around. They demonstrated a pretty good virtual background feature. You could see a little bit in the hair um, where all of the, the, the effect wasn't working, but hey, yeah, hair is hard. Just ask NVIDIA with her hair works. The demonstration that they showed with a hair dryer was awesome. Very great example. To give you some idea, because I have some experience in this space, noises that are constant or familiar are easy to mask out. So the hair dryer is going to make a pretty consistent hum, a specific spectrum. They're using their AI to basically identify that and process it out. A dog's bark or a doorbell ring, those are also very similar. Baby cry is another one. Those are similar noises. Keyboard typing is another similar noise. Now, they didn't show keyboard typing or mouse clicks. If they did and they can filter that out, that's amazing. Like that's a giant leap in terms of broadcast because what streamers often have to do, if they don't have a perfect setup, like I don't have a perfect setup, you can hear my clicks. So I have to put a towel over top of my hands when I am live streaming or if I'm doing something that's going to require a lot of clicks, I have to put a towel over it. And it's quite frankly, it's annoying. The virtual background feature, I also thought that they did pretty well. It gave you a slight blur or completely replaced it as well. The head tracking was interesting and slightly problematic, right? I don't want my cameras constantly moving around as I am actually moving in the frame, um, but some people might. So there's that capability, which which was pretty interesting. Now, AMD's response to this, we haven't necessarily seen. And to me, that that is somewhat problematic because if AMD from a GPU standpoint is going to compete, they need to tap into the creative community and the live streaming community in a way that they really haven't so far. The last topic I want to talk about is this NVIDIA Reflex system. As somebody who actually built a coaching engine, esports being very good on stream, even somebody that is a novice, just simply that feeling of being competitive, this is kind of a big deal. Because from a latency standpoint, there are numerous points that can slow down what is shown on screen and your ability to react to it. They showed a lot of awesome things on here, but the one thing that I really want to point out, oh, sorry, two things that I really want to point out here. One, they locked the GPU and the CPU together in order to bypass the rendering queue. If you have a good CPU that's easily keeping up with your GPU, then now you have the capability to really focus in on something that is meaningful in your gaming experience. You are able to get faster processing between what's happening in the game and what shows up on the screen. And that's a big deal. They also showed 30. Uh, 360 hertz monitors. That's that is for the ultimate in esports scene. That's for that's really for people who are really trying to compete, right? But having that lower latency with that super fast refresh rate, and they even are tying in your peripherals, so certain peripherals will be able to work very well with the 360 hertz monitors to give you a better picture of the overall latency from rendering latency to display latency to peripheral input latency. And those items can actually help you as you are adjusting your approach to a game and your ability to react to the game. So if you are, if you're somebody who's trying to get into the esports scene and it's a shooter, those are very powerful arguments for why you should be looking at an NVIDIA graphics card. They really, really hit some of the most important elements of system latency. 
and being able to improve your overall responsiveness, pretty big deal. And, and they have a good amount of partners here, right? So Apex, I like Apex. I think it's a super fun game. You've got Call of Duty. Destiny, not necessarily known for its esports scene, but Fortnite certainly is. And Valorant is certainly making an effort in that area as well. So very good on NVIDIA for this. And honestly, we need a response from AMD to show why they are competitive and, and still capture the gaming mindset. The last topic I want to touch on here for NVIDIA is GPU direct storage. They're taking one of the main advantages shown for the PS5 and actually leveraging it here in NVIDIA. The direct storage that you have, even if it's a, a super fast NVMe, still goes to the CPU for processing, goes into local storage memory, RAM, gets processed there, and then gets sent over to the GPU, and then back and forth, back and forth. Each of those bounces and each of those buffers and each of those queues cause slight delays. And loading all of that up is essentially what is slowing down your ability to load a game quickly and get to playing fast. Instead, with GPU direct storage, they are bypassing much of the PCI interactions, all of the CPU interactions, all of the RAM interactions, and going straight to the GPU itself. Theoretically, this could also improve overall performance of a game. If the CPU is not necessary for any of the direct loading of the graphical assets, it can focus exclusively on processing interactions between objects, AI, pathing, all of the logic behind the game that doesn't involve actually directly rendering the game. So this could be another one of those things that produces a bigger leap forward for gaming technology than what we had before. And so again, I have to say, NVIDIA is directly answering a bunch of advantages that AMD has traditionally held, even going to the heart of what the PS5 next generation has made their biggest bets on, the ability to load a game fast. And so you have to sit back and think of all of the things that they came out with, how is AMD going to answer? The we fact that they have been silent up to now has shown that they probably have something that's very good, very capable of competing at a certain degree and a certain higher level than what in, they have in the past. I think NVIDIA's pricing also shows that they are anticipating AMD coming out with something that is very competitive with the 3070 to the 3080. They've left pricing room as wealth for a potential 3080 Ti to get a fuller fat version of the chip out. What is AMD going to come out with? Is Big Navi, Navi 2X, going to be powerful enough in ray tracing to be able to compete with NVIDIA, promising twice as much performance as the 5700 XT? Whether or not they are capable of delivering that, though, is the bigger question. Are they going to capitalize on it? Are they going to announce before people start on what NVIDIA has come out with? Are they going to take and win in benchmarking? And are they going to have answers for broadcast reflex and studio and dlss and ray tracing and hdmi 2.1 are they going to have answers to those technologies that nvidia is baking in at a super affordable price the fact that you can get a 3070 which matches the 2080 ti in performance plus has better ray tracing at 500 dollars, and that you can beat it at 700 dollars with the 3080, NVIDIA is squarely gunning for AMD again in order to make sure that they keep the 80% market share that they have in GPUs. That's ultimately going to be bad for us because that means they're going to be able to drive up prices. So we really need AMD to come out swinging for the mainstream middle to upper end of the segment, really getting into more of the enthusiast class cards. Otherwise, we're not going to have competition still, and, and that's that's going to lead to higher prices no matter what. So there you have it. That is that is my take on AMD and NVIDIA have been showing the broadcast, the reflex, and the studio. Those elements to me are super interesting. And then DLS 2.0 NVIDIA is really, is really hitting it hard. So that's all. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please share with somebody that might find this as equally as useful. Click the bell icon if you want notifications. 
after you subscribe and give me a like and a thumbs up. Comment below. I'm happy to engage and answer any questions or anything that I know. Happy to see a conversation get started around this as well. Again, thank you very much and you have a wonderful day.